First thing I'll do is mark the metalloids using the pattern of one, two, three, four down the stairs, and then two under. So these boxes here are metalloids. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label the periods. These have been labeled here, but I'm also going to label the periods over here. Now I'm going to read the inert gases. The inert gases, inert means that the element does not react. Inert. That tells me that the inert gases are the noble gases. The inert gas is bombol. That's B-O. Wobble, W-O. Jeptum. And Logon. So, I know that these four elements, B-O, W-O, J, and L, go in this column in some order. So I've used that information. I'm going to cross it out. I'm also going to put a piece of tape so this piece of paper stays stuck to the desk. Okay, so among these gases, Wobble has the greatest atomic mass and Bombel the least. Wobble has the greatest atomic mass and Bombel the least. So I know that elements get heavier as you go down because what they're really doing is getting heavier as you go from left to right. Heavier, 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 heavier. That means heavier, heavier. So it said again, it said wobble has the greatest atomic mass. I'm going to cross out wobble. I'm going to put it in. And then it tells me that bomble has the least. Bomble goes there. And I'm going to cross out the info I've used. Logon is lighter than Jeptum. Logon is lighter than Jeptum. Logon is lighter, which means it has fewer protons and neutrons, which means it must be this one. Cross it off. And then J, cross it off, goes there. And we've taken care of group 18. We've taken care of this info. I'm going to, cross, uh, I'm going to check that. So now I know that I don't have to come back to it. The most reactive group of metals, that tells me something. The most reactive group of metals. Well, that must be the alkali metals. Remember that that's hydrogen. Actually, I'm going to label it H, because I know hydrogen is there. And I know that hydrogen is not an alkali metal. The most reactive group of metals is X, B, Y, C, H, and Q. X, B, Y, C, H, and Q. So I'm going to cross that out. Of these metals, Chow has the lowest atomic mass. So, Chow has the lowest atomic mass. That must mean it's the lightest. So that doesn't mean it's lowest in the column. It means it's lowest in weight, which means must go here. Cross it out. Quaxel is in the same period as Wobble. Quaxel is in the same period as Wobble. Here's Wobble. Quaxel must go there. And that means... There we go. So that means that X goes either here or here, and BY goes either here or here. So these two are left over. We haven't figured out their homes yet, but I want to make sure those are crossed out. And I'm going to make sure this is crossed out, and I'm going to put a gigantic check so I don't ever have to come back to it. Next line is Apstrom, Vulcania, and Krat are nonmetals whose atoms typically gain or share one electron. I think this is the key. They gain or steal, let's say, 
or share one electron. That means that these are non-metals that are one electron away from being happy. So that tells me that A, V, and KT go in group 17. A, V, and K, T. I'll just underline these so I can separate them. I can see that they're separate. So I'm going to cross out that info. Volcania is in the same period as Quaxel and Wobble. Volcania is in the same period as Quaxel and Wobble. That's Volcania then. So I'll cross that out. I'll cross that out and I'll check it. The semi-metals are E, H, I, T, and S, S. The semi-metals are E, H, I, T, and S, S. So I know those four go in these four highlighted boxes, the metalloids. Semi-metals are metalloids. And cis is the semi-metal with the greatest atomic mass. So of these four, the one that's the heaviest would have to be that one, because it would have the biggest atomic number. So that means SS goes here. Ernst, which is E, is the semi-metal with the lowest atomic mass. E. The lowest atomic mass. Okay. Hi-ho and Terablum are in group 14. Okay, so that means they're here. That doesn't really tell us much. Terablum has more protons than Hi-ho. Aha! Terablum has more protons than Hi-ho. That means Terablum is heavier. And Hi-ho is here. Yazer touches the zigzag line, but it's a metal. Hmm, that sounds like aluminum. Let's see. Yazer touches the zigzag line. Here's the zigzag line. These, yep, Yazer will go here. It helps to know that aluminum is there. The lightest of all is called pst. Hmm. That would be this one. The heaviest element in the group of 30 is El Dorado. E-L. That would be this one. The most chemically active... That must mean reactive. The most chemically active non-metal is Abstrom. Non-metal. Chemically active non-metal is Abstrom. Abstrom. Abstrom is in here. We've already figured that out from earlier. So I know the most chemically active or chemically reactive element is fluorine. I know that these are really reactive. I know that that's more reactive than those. So this must be Abstrom. It looks like on this planet, Abstrom is fluorine. So I'm going to cross it out. And that leaves KT left. And it told us earlier that KT goes with V and A. So we can deduce that KT belongs in this spot. Alright. Krat reacts with Bu to form table salt. Well, Krat is already in there. Reacts with Bu to form table salt. I know that table salt is sodium chloride. I know that this one is chlorine. So sodium is over here somewhere. And I, I think I'm remembering that sodium is in this spot. So that must be Bu. And the symbol for Bu was given earlier. By. So I'm going to put it in. I'm going to cross it out. That means that X which goes in here, must be that one. So it is possible to figure out where some of these go without 
even learning anything about them. You can sort of do a process of elimination. The element doggone D has only four protons in its atoms. So the element with four protons would be one, two, three, four, beryllium. So that means doggone goes here. Fluxit is important in the chemistry of life. That sounds like carbon to me. Fx. Carbon is here. It forms compounds made of long chains of fluxit atoms called polymers. Okay, great. Rat trap and doe a deer. Like doe a deer, a female deer, ha ha ha. Rat trap and doe a deer are metals in the fourth period. Okay. One, two, three, four. Metals in the fourth period. It must be here and here. Those are the metals left over in the fourth period. But rat trap is less reactive than doe a deer. Rat trap is less reactive. Well, I know elements are really reactive over here, so they must get less reactive as you go that way. So, the rat trap must be this, and doe a deer must be this. Magnificon and Goldie and Sissus are all members of group 15. That's M, G, and SS. Here's group 15. M, G, and SS is already in there. Okay. Goldie has fewer electrons than Magnificon. Goldie has fewer electrons. That means it's lighter. That must be Goldie. And this is Magnificon. So I guess Magnificon is phosphorus, and Goldie is nitrogen. Cross those out. I'm done with that column. Forgot to check these off. I'm done with that column. Done with that one. And I'm done with this one. Erp, Oz, and Nutie all gain two electrons when they react. They gain two electrons. That means they must have six valence electrons. And they gain two to become full. So this means they're in the oxygen family. That's U, P, O, Z, and N, U. U, P, O, Z, and N, U. Noit is found as a diatomic molecule. You might need to Google that one. If you do, you'll find the Hofbrinkle list. So these guys on the Hofbrinkle list form little doubles if they're alone. Here's hydrogen. Hydrogen doubles up. Oops, we're off the screen. Hofbrinkle. Here are hydrogens, they double up. So this clue is that noit is found as a diatomic molecule. And it goes in here. I'm remembering that this is oxygen, which is on the Hofbrinkle list. And underneath the oxygen, I think, was sulfur, and I don't remember what that is. I don't see sulfur here. Aha! There's more to the clue. Noit is found as a diatomic molecule, Hofbrinkle, and has the same properties as a gas found in that faraway planet called Earth. That must be oxygen. Noit goes here. Oz has a lower atomic number than ERP. Alright. Lower atomic number. That means it's lighter. Oz goes here. ERP goes below it. Done. The element anatom has atoms with a total of 49 electrons. Hmm. That would mean, mean 49 protons, too. So it's going to be down here at the bottom. I guess I could count my way. One. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, plus 10 
transition metals is 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, plus another 10 is 48, 49. I guess this is AN. 49. This seemed too hard to figure out. Zapper and Pi lose two electrons when they react. They lose two electrons. That must mean they each have two electrons to lose. That means that they go in here. Yeah, group two. All right. Zapper is used to make lightweight alloys. Well, I don't even know what an alloy is. I secretly do, but I'm pretending like I don't. But I noticed this word, lightweight. So if zapper Z and pi, pi, belong in here, and zapper is used to make lightweight alloys, then zapper is lighter. It must go there, pi goes there, and then obviously that 49 one AN would land here. So there's your alien periodic table. I think this deserves a third eye.